Oh, hello everybody, Brian Gelson with you again and uh, thank you so much for your patience and I hope you're enjoying looking up the references. You know what, it's really something I've found in my life that the scriptures bring conviction and that's why I share so much. I throw out all these references, you've got to hit the pause button and and stop and look at them. I can't convince you of anything. It's not my job. I'm not here to say, oh, I think you should be an X-28er. No, I'm pointing out the scriptures of Paul in the X period because you know what? That will convince you that X-28 is the boundary and that there was no transmission, transition uh, or progressive revelation to Paul from X-9 to X-28. Um, so I'm trying to focus on this statement that is popular. Paul taught Peter grace. It's such a nebulous statement, isn't it? Vaporous. Paul taught Peter grace. What What do you mean by grace? Well, I mean the dispensation of the grace of God. Oh, okay. Those are the dispensational features of Ephesians and Colossians revealed outside of prophecy and promise things that were hid in God because we have as we have found so far justification by faith through grace as expanded in Romans and Galatians is absolutely framed by Old Testament prophecy and promise justification by faith through grace was never hid in God consequently Paul didn't have to teach Peter a thing about it Peter had his mind to open to understand the scriptures. And if we don't think Peter understood justification by faith through grace, then, as I suggested last video, the Lord failed to open Peter's understanding about a lot of scriptures that Paul references. And we're going to look at them again in Romans chapter 10, a little bit more briefly this time. I don't want to be condescending, but I'm trying to paint a picture for you. Can you imagine two baskets... On one side, we have a basket with a pineapple. <laughs> bit coarse, isn't it? But in that basket, there is Peter and Paul. And with the pineapple, Peter and Paul, there's oranges. Nothing except oranges. And those oranges represent prophecy and promise and the Jews and Gentiles of the Acts period who believed. On the right hand, imagine a basket, if you will, with only Paul in that basket and a pineapple. And in that basket are bananas. Now, the pineapple represents justification by faith through grace, which you can find in the Acts period and the Old Testament. And you can find justification being made meet to partake of the inheritance of the saints in light. Uh, you can find all of that being translated out of the kingdom of darkness in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins you can find all of those related redemptive doctrines in the basket where there's Paul only and the pineapple and the bananas the pineapples in both baskets does not make an orange a banana and it does not make a banana an orange in other words the fact that justification by faith through grace can be found in Paul in the Acts period and after the Acts period does not make the prophecies and the prophecies and the Jews and Gentiles to be blessed with Abraham it doesn't make the members of the church which is body in the other basket after Acts 28 so that's just a picture for you so when someone says Paul taught Peter Grace what, what are we referring to you? Paul taught Peter Grace what? Justification by faith through grace? No, Paul didn't have to teach him that. And in the Acts period, Paul isn't teaching anybody about the bananas, that is, the dispensational truths of Ephesians and Colossians in the Acts period, as we shall see. So Paul didn't teach Peter anything. Now, in Romans 1, last video, we looked at the great gospel that Paul was sharing. Verse 16 and verse 17. And we know that verse 17 is a quote out of Habakkuk. 
chapter 2, verse 4. And by Habakkuk 2, which refers to the fact that the earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the earth covers the sea, and that can also be found in Isaiah 11. And Isaiah 11 can be found in Romans chapter 15, in the hope section. And that all goes back to Numbers 14, where Israel rebelled at Kadesh Barnea, and God said, despite all this, Despite Israel's rebellion, I will be glorified in the earth. Now then, same words. So even, that's the, that's the theme of Romans, isn't it? Even though Israel is rebellion, rebellious, God hadn't cast them aside. And in that setting of Israel being rebellious and being disobedient and gainsaying, Romans 10, 21, the justification by faith is in a context of God saying, yet my glory will be known and the knowledge of my glory in all the earth. Justification by faith through grace is in the earth, in Romans. And the faithfulness of God, despite Israel's unfaithfulness, Romans chapter 3, 1 to 4. In Romans 4, we looked at, and, and I'm not going to go over these because, you know what? I'm talking to people who know the scriptures and so you can open them up and have a look. But in Romans chapter 4, it talks about Abraham who offered his son, Genesis 22, remember, but there was a substitute and so forth and so on and you know that. And this is all about the fact that Abraham believed God, Romans 4 verse 3, and he was reckoned righteous. That's grace in Abraham. And that's out of Genesis 15, verse 6. And what's in Genesis 15, verse 6? The very next verse. In Genesis 15, 7, God says, I'm the one that brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. Inherit it. Oh, justification by faith in Abraham is in a land. And in fact, the covenant in Genesis 15, down the bottom of the chapter, 17 and 18, is it? Of Genesis 15? where God is one and Abram was put into a sleep, that's referenced in Galatians chapter 3. Justification by faith in Romans chapter 4 is in Abraham in Genesis 15 and in Galatians chapter 3 it's in Abraham and the very same covenant. And their inheritance which was given before the law to the believing Jews and Gentiles in Galatians 3, go read it, is that very inheritance given to Abraham by promise. We went down and saw David. So we've got Abraham representing the priestly function of Christ and we've got David the kingly function and David says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Did Paul teach, teach David about this wonderful reckoning? And did, did Peter not know Genesis 15? Did Peter not know Habakkuk? Did Peter not know Psalm 32? It's an amazing thing, isn't it? David is referenced in the matter of the Lord not imputing iniquity. And Peter, in Acts chapter 2, is referencing David. David, It's pouring out his ears. But he didn't know about the reckoning, right? He said, in this man, Jesus of Nazareth, God has raised him to sit on David's throne and in him is forgiveness of sins. Like we looked in chapter 3 of Acts that the lame man was raised and made whole by faith in his name. Oh, Peter's preaching faith in Jesus to restore a lame man. In Romans chapter 5, Remember, Romans is the great exposition about justification by faith. Well, actually, it's about what God was dealing with Israel. But do you know what? In chapter 5 of Romans, this is fascinating. Paul talks about Adam. He talks about one man's disobedient, disobedience and the obedience of Christ. It's interesting how Paul writes about Adam, doesn't he? And Adam was in a garden, right? Where there were rivers, Right? So Paul references Adam. In fact, in the New Testament, in the Acts period, you'll find that Paul is expanding on Adam and you'll find it in 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. 
But what is the resurrection at the bottom of 1 Corinthians 15 and with Adam smack bang in the middle of the chapter? The, ref, the, the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15, and this is Paul writing about justification, supernatural gifts, the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15 is according to Hosea and Isaiah. Adam, in Romans, in a context of justification by faith through grace. Adam is not destined for heavenly places. Abraham is not destined for e heavenly places. Um, heavenly places is not in the prophets. It's not in Habakkuk or Isaiah or Genesis. That's the law and the prophets, right? No wonder Paul says the righteousness of God is witnessed by the law and the prophets, and that's who he's quoting as he expounds the doctrine. In Romans chapter 8, and I'm, I'm skipping through some chapters, but what I'm trying to show is that justification by faith through grace is in a context of Adam, is in a context of prophecy, is in a context of a promise made to Abraham. Chapter 8, Paul says, what? We're heirs together with Christ. For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. And he talks about Abba, Father, in Romans 8, 15. Oh, Abba. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. There's an adoption there too, right? We've got an adoption here. And Abba, Father, in Galatians 4, looks to the Jerusalem which is above. Oh, Galatians chapter 3 is about justification by faith through grace. And in chapter 4, he goes to an adoption and he says, we are like Isaac, children of promise. Go read Galatians 4. And he looks to the Jerusalem which is above. The Jerusalem which is above is not heavenly places where you and I as members of the church, which is his body, are destined. Anyway, we'll look at it in a minute maybe if I don't run out of time. I'm trying to keep these to 20 minutes. In the middle of Romans chapter 8, though, he goes on to say, I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. What glory in Romans? Well, I've referenced Romans 15 and the great hope and Isaiah 11, the wolf and the lamb and the lion and the ox, etc., etc. The glory of Romans is not heavenly places. The glory of Galatians is not heavenly places. It's the new Jerusalem. Oh, and by the way, in Galatians 4, the next reference is Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 isn't about heavenly places. And that's what Paul writes for the Jerusalem which is above the mother of us all, for as it is written, rejoice thou, and that's Isaiah 54. Go look at Galatians 4. That's justification by faith in the prophecy of Isaiah 54 and the New Jerusalem. So Paul didn't teach Peter about justification by grace and the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. But Peter knew about those. And so he says in verse 22 of Romans 8, the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. <clears throat> He talks about the first fruit of the Spirit in Romans 8.23. Well, that's Pentecost, you see, which had a first fruit. The Holy Spirit came out and they all had the first fruit of the Spirit. The powers of the age to come, as Hebrews says. So the whole, um, the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The creation itself, the wolf, the lion, the ox. That's Romans, justification by faith. In Romans 9, which I didn't touch on much before, I'm just pulling out some verses. This is Romans where Paul speaks about justification by faith through grace. And there are no bananas. That is, there's nothing dispensationally out of the second basket where Paul alone is with the pineapple and the bananas. There are no bananas in Romans. It's oranges. Oranges in Romans. No bananas. And Romans is written late in the Acts period. So you don't look in the basket and see, well, that orange is starting to change to a banana. No, it's all promise and prophecy. Now then, Romans 9. I just want to pick up a couple of verses out of Romans 9. 24 and 25. <clears throat> Paul says, 
we Jews, uh, verse 24, even us whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. What are we? Vessels of mercy, an elect remnant of grace. As he said in Hosea, I will call them my people, which are not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Now we have here references to Hosea. Did you know, some people think that the Jews Paul taught to were body members and in the Acts period, and the Gentiles that Paul preached to in the Acts period were body members, in other words, they were bananas, even though everything in Romans is oranges, prophecy and promise. But Peter's Jews were oranges. They weren't bananas. They weren't members of the body of Christ. Well, it's really interesting that here Paul is quoting Hosea, which is exactly what Peter does in his first letter, chapter 2. So Peter and Paul are referencing the same prophecy about the believers, whether they're Jews and Gentiles, being uh, a people which were not my people and her beloved which was not my beloved. So anyone who suggests to you that the Jews that Peter spoke to were not the same as the Jews that Paul spoke to, well, Peter and Paul are referencing the same prophecy regarding those who had believed in the Acts period and were looking forward to all the fulfillment that the oranges, that is, the blessings and promises, spoke about. I just wanted to point that out. Please cross-reference. <clears throat> we have so many phenomenal tools nowadays. We are without excuse. We cannot possibly get there to the Lord and say, well, I didn't know that Hosea was in Romans 9 and in 1 Peter 2 because they didn't tell me. When you can get for free, my sword, Esau, on your phone, you can get Esau on your desktop, and it's all cross-referenced. So don't, don't say, well, that Brian Kelson told me that. Peter used Hosea in talking to the Jews and Paul used Hosea talking to the Jews and Gentiles. Yes, that's right. And both men in that basket with oranges and justification by faith, the pineapple, that's what they're talking about. Prophet, promise and prophecy. I went through Romans 10 last video. Please go back and watch the last video. And we spoke. It's, un, it's just unbelievable. Romans 10 is speaking about justification by faith as found in Moses. Oh, Peter didn't know that? Paul had to teach Peter about Deuteronomy 30? Peter taught, Paul taught Peter what? What did Paul teach Peter when they're both quoting the same, test, the same prophecy? When they're both quoting the same scriptures, Joel 2 in Acts 2 and Romans 10 right here. It's an absolute abomination to say that Paul taught Peter anything. An abomination. It's a prop. Something has to prop up the false ideology that Paul was teaching the dispensational truths, that is the bananas out of the right basket, in the Acts period, when everything about justification by faith is deep buried in prophecy about the inheritance and the land and the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. <clears throat> Romans 10.11 for well, the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You think, oh, that's Joel too. No, it isn't. It's Isaiah 28, 16. And I think Peter references that in 1 Peter 2, 6. Oh, so here's Paul and Peter quoting Hosea together and Isaiah together. Well, there you go. They're only proven it, Brian. Paul certainly told Peter. No, he didn't. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that Paul taught Peter anything. The only thing Paul did to Peter in Galatians chapter 2 was challenge him because he was being hypocritical to the fact that he knew no one was being justified by the works of the law. We Jews know a man is not justified by the works of the law, and that included Peter. That's the only thing Paul did in Galatians 2. He rebuked Peter. He didn't teach him anything because he already knew it. That's why he was a hypocrite. 
We know that Joel, uh, Romans 10, 13 is Joel 2. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Peter and Paul. We had a look in um, 10, 15. How beautiful are the feet of those that uh, preach the gospel of peace. What gospel of peace is Paul referring to in Romans chapter 10? He's talking about justification by faith through grace. That's what he's talking about. And he references Isaiah 52 in the matter of the gospel of peace. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach, you know, glad tidings. Isaiah 52. In Romans 10, 16, we have... But they have not obeyed our gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who believed our report? So we've got Isaiah 52 in Romans 10, 15. We've got Isaiah 53 in Romans 10, 16. And where did we have Isaiah 54 again? Oh, that's right. Galatians 4 and the Jerusalem which is above. Justification by faith in Isaiah or surrounded by supported by, endorsed by, Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah 52, Isaiah 53. He will justify many. Verse 19 of Romans is what? Moses again. I will provoke you to jealousy by them which are no people. Well, we've already got Moses in Deuteronomy 30 at the top of Romans chapter 10. And down here, we've got Deuteronomy 32. And Deuteronomy 32, by the way, is quoted in regard to the hope in Romans. Let me have a look and see if I can find that. Romans chapter 12. And if I don't find Deuteronomy here, I'm going to be... Oh, I'm Romans 15. I beg your pardon. Romans 15. Deuteronomy 32, 43. So we've got Deuteronomy 32 in Romans chapter 10, quoting Moses, and in Romans 12, 15, a uh, 15, I've done it again, Romans 15, 9 to 13, we have got Paul quoting Moses again. And this is the hope of Romans. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. For he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Ah, the hope of Romans is found in Moses, the law. And it's Deuteronomy 32. Justification by faith is found in Abraham in Genesis 15 where he, the land was given to him by a covenant when animals were cut and he was put into a sleep. So we've got Romans beginning with Habakkuk in the land. We've got justification by faith in chapter 3 of Romans and we've got Abraham and a land. And we've got the blessing and the inheritance in Romans 15 back in Deuteronomy again. Oh wait, Deuteronomy. I wonder where else we find Deuteronomy. I think um, I've got to finish here. Third, let me go to 35. Maybe this is it. To me belong as... Uh, vengeance Ro uh, Deuteronomy 32 35 and do you know what Romans 12 says dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is rich, written vengeance belongeth to me I will repay saith the Lord so we've now got Moses in Romans 12 as well at what point can we argue that Paul had a progressive revelation when Romans written towards the end of the book of Acts is about oranges, prophecy and promise. Oranges, Jews and Gentiles. We've got it in Moses, quoted by Paul in Romans, justified by faith. A people that were not a people, Hosea, Paul and Peter. It's time. If you're a viewer of my videos and you know these scriptures it's time to speak out we have to expose mid acts for what it's doing it's mixing oranges and bananas it's mixing the dispensational truths after acts 28 with the ones before 
And there are people in the Medax movement all around the world that are hungry to know the truth. And you, beloved friend, I can't do this. I'm helping you. You need to speak and you need to speak out with lots of prayer now. The Lord bless you as you serve our Lord and head, which is a banana out of the basket on the right. He's not the head of the body in Romans, despite the fact gifts are mentioned in Romans chapter 12. And that's 1 Corinthians 12, where the body is used as a picture of gifts. Lord bless you. Search and see.